Hello everybody, welcome. This is no bullshit gaming podcast when I have gamers session number 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 <laughs> session number twelve. We're discussing latest news, fun stuff, and dropping some knowledge. Uh, and don't forget, this is 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Let's dive in and uh, you know, let's let's enjoy it together. So welcome, guys, uh, Felix and Jakub. How was your week? I think I got COVID again. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding move. Surprise! Well, that's uh, that's uh, what you get uh, for uh, attending EDM uh, uh, music festival, right? There yeah, exactly. Yeah, and sharing glasses and stuff. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you get what you deserve. <laughs> mm. Well, let's see. Well, there's uh, one in July in Slovakia, and then another one uh, in August. So let's see what I can I can get <laughs> during the summer. Mm. Yeah, I have hit the end of the content treadmill on Lost Ark currently. Pretty much, not much content left. It's all you all you always talk about. Do you have life? Of course. You always, always speak about lost. He art. lives in the metaverse. He lives in the metaverse. <laughs> what? You, you know, game designers like to play. <laughs> if you didn't know. Sure, but no. <laughs> okay. Do Do you have any other news besides the Lost Ark? <laughs> well, of course, of course. There's spring coming here, and you know, going for walks out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, oh man okay well it feels like ages since you last talked uh, with steven and he was like last last week <laughs> it's great to be talking to you guys so today we're going to talk about the meta core and uh and meta uh as well lots of metaverses meta, lots of meta <laughs> metaverse uh also about like how u.s government thinks uh, the crypto heist Axie Infinity was pulled by <laughs> North Korea. Interesting. And uh, Niantic with a new AR game. We talk about Sonic the Hedgehog and CD Projekt Red uh, sales. And we have our main topic at the end, uh, which is an industry conference guide. So, uh, yeah, well, let's start. Oh, Matya, you need to start with the first story. You're the one that's been championing this for ages. <laughs> uh, well, I had a lot of comments uh, s- uh, as soon as they started doing these uh, TV commercials with uh, Katie Bates. So, okay, so Metacore, the, the Finnish company, spent around $20 million, uh, on TV commercials with Hollywood stars, and uh, they rotated the, the TV ad during the prime time on Fox and ABC. So uh, pretty large TV stations, right? So uh, large advertising investments increased the Metacore's net net sales to almost 60 million. But (laughs) they produced kind of like, what, 65 uh, million loss already this year? Yeah, something like that. Which is interesting. But but they, but they expect the revenue of 150 to 180 million. Yeah, next that's what year. I wanted to say. So um, so they are aiming for getting this money back in one and a half years or two years. So in in the world of UA, you have uh, always a problem if you have small budget, you don't know where to spend it efficiently, or if you have very high budget, you don't know where to spend it because you're spending already <laughs> on every channel that is out there. So um, it's interesting that they are saying uh, um, this uh, in, in a headline. This is a mathematical system where money is put in and this is <laughs> known how to get it back. Uh, I mean, you get some money back uh, after you spend it back. So it's who would say I'm, that, right? I, I mean, I, I think this TV spot ad is not necessarily like I can see how it could have been a great idea on paper. I can see some people sitting in like a boardroom on the marketing team and being like, how do we reach our golden core, which is women aged 45 to 60, which is like, you know, their kind of golden goose laying cohort. And, you know, someone might be like, oh, TV ads. And then like, oh, how do we stand out? Oh, we have just like, well, how much did they borrow from Supercell? Like they lent 150. about 150. Yeah, 150. 150. And then they're like, oh, we should easily spend like, you know, 2% <laughs> of that on a TV ad. Like, why not? Like, that's how you reach these people. <laughs> and then like on paper, it sounds amazing. But, you know, reality is not on paper. And like when... <laughs> <laughs> it's probably hit the airways, you know, like, I'm sure this, like, TV ad, since they're not doing another one, 
pretty much says that it was abysmal. <laughs> well, they, they claim the TV commercials uh, performed a little bit worse than they <laughs> hoped. <laughs> ooh, ooh, surprise, surprise. But Felix, you are on fire. I, I love it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, look. So if you spent already on all the channels out there, then the TV is, uh, well, a really nice addition to everything. It adds up to all the branding bullshit that uh, a lot of marketing team uh, is uh, is speaking about because, well, you know, oh, well, you know, 150 million, like you said, we can spend it on TV. Well, okay. Which is quite questionable because if you if you spend 20 million on, uh, on TV with, um, well, underperforming results or uh, subpar results, then uh, you could spend that 20 million on other ad networks with uh, maybe a little bit worse ROI, but at least you could, uh, well, evaluate I properly a bit more. I mean, I mean, I mean, oh, you, you'd bad. measure this the same way, pretty much as old school TV ads. And yeah, the way you measured yeah, yeah. old school TV ads is you, you look at the attribution data, like if it spikes during the time the commercial airs. Yep. I would love to take a look. They're probably using Apps Flyer or Adjust or something like that. I would love to take a look at it and see what actually happened when they aired this, like on the two TV stations, if there was even a bump or if it was uh, just I'm sure flat that line. there was a bump. I'm there sure was. that there was a bump. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the main question is, of course, that uh, you're spending already on UA channels. It's not the question of do we do either TV ads or UA. We do both. But the, the real question is if these... 20 million TV ads, that's just the cost of the production, not the actual <laughs> cost of the advertising time, is still more worth it than actual throwing UA into other channels. That's that's the main question in my book. Well, in my opinion, you know, you always uh, you always hear what I, I'm about to say about this branding bullshit uh, activities. Although I ran several TV ads in, in the past, in not in the US, in UK, Germany, France, and it was kind of nice. Uh, well, uh, during the global launch, but really afterwards, I wouldn't. Most probably, I wouldn't do it again. Would rather spend it on different channels than than TV, because you can still reach those players on other channels. Okay, here's uh, a question. Oh. <laughs> nice. All right, question. Let's like put yourself in this situation. I'm the person in the Metacore like board reading room or the like the marketing person who's pitching this. But instead of saying it's going to be on NBC at prime time, I say we spend 60 million instead of the 20 million, but we put it during Super Bowl. What do you guys think? Does that change anything? I'm not sure if that target audience is there. Yeah, the, there's a mismatch between the audience definitely there. That's the thing. I mean, the Clash uh, of Clans or Clash Royale, what was, uh, which one was it? With uh, Clash Liam of Neeson. Clans, Liam Neeson. Yeah. Yeah. So that was definitely like... Uh, Competitive absolute, males. Yeah. That, that's what you yeah. want to get. Yeah, exactly. So that made sense. But, uh, well, merch mention during Super Bowl, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. But... I might, I, I, well, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it anyway. <laughs> Fuck it. I would do it anyway, just for fun. Now, jokes aside. Uh, as soon as this was uh, released, it was uh, also used for HR type of campaigns for Metacore, and I was seeing those ads across LinkedIn all the time, all the time. It was just uh, ridiculous. But I have to say, so um, their ads at the moment, and I, uh, I've been targeted a lot in, uh, in the last couple of months. Well, obviously, because they need to expand the target audience with that kind of budget. Um, and I see pretty nice uh, amount of comments and, uh, and shares and reactions under those, uh, those creatives. So I was really, really skeptical. But then um, players comment always about, OK, wow, this is amazing. We are really curious how the story goes, what's next. So they are looking at this uh, as kind of like a series of, of creatives. Mm. Something nice. similar that Lily's Garden did, which Exa they exactly, already kind of... Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want it's to say copying, but taking heavy inspiration. It's <laughs> the same thing. It's the same thing all over again. They just used uh, the celebrity and it's like very much like more expensive than the, the Lily's Garden. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? I mean... 
like Felix, like you said, it's it looks very good on paper, but in, in, real, in reality, I'm not fully convinced that this is something that works well. When when you ran these TV commercials yourself, w which genre was it? I think it was casual. It was casual, yeah. It yeah. Was a, adventure. How did it convert? Like, how did you tr you track the bumps by just seeing when the air is? But like, yeah, how how were they? Like, was it like in Germany? Was it like 500 installs? Was it a thousand installs? Like, no, what, it what's was actually a baseline. Couple of thousand installs actually during those, uh, like overall during uh, the whole um, TV spot. And also, what we found out is that um, there was some like decrease in terms of the CPI um, around those um, times that we aired the TV spot. But we never actually were able to prove this is actually because of the TV spot. So, yeah, because then you know you don't see Player X ads running in the TV these exactly. days. Exactly. That's exactly. that's the main main point here. <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's the thing. So uh, either you do fake ads and and try to to maximize the the lowest CPI possible, or you go uh, TV. <laughs> well, I know what I would choose. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can move on with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Meta, again in the headlines, uh, or let's say Facebook, uh, former Facebook said that they will charge creators up to 47.5% to sell virtual items in their version of Metaverse, <laughs> which the company said that, uh, or let me pretty much break it down, so first you pay 30% of the cost when you buy something on Oculus Quest uh, platform, and then you pay additional 25% out of the rest of it uh, to have some kind of a trading fee, if I understand correctly. And if you add those two up, you end up with 47.5 percentage sale price uh, for each dollar, depending on yeah, where the sale price takes place. And this is kind of interesting because Mark Zuckerberg was the one that previously criticized Apple for charging developers too high of a fee of 30%, which now they even increased. Why not? I told you he was criticizing Apple because 30% is really low. <laughs> they should charge more. <laughs> they should charge more. Yeah, so they're starting to pretty much roll out their monetization machine in their, if I get it right, this is the Horizon Worlds app that they yeah. want to have this kind of a metaverse in, which currently is just people without legs uh, in this kind of animated avatar <laughs> circus. So don't know if <laughs> what, what's happening there. I think they even said that they're using animated it during Corona. avatar circus is that's that's perfect. But they said they they're using it as some kind of a remote workplace uh, during Corona yeah, or they, something. Yeah, they have uh, their uh, meetings in in the yeah. horizon worlds with with headsets on and everything. So. <laughs> Like I should be the one speaking for this because I did the VR game before, but yeah. it means that I know all the limitations. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Uh, this yeah. maybe it's going to happen in twenty years, not uh, right now. Yeah, the text definitely not there. Unfortunately, it's more of a like there's so much stuff that can be improved, and we are not able to do it because the cost would be horrendous like the current headsets that are out there they're great they're like such a step up from what was there in the 90s mm -hmm. but still if we want to go really further they would be costing ten thousands not not like the the price that facebook is pretty much undercutting currently when they're selling the um, quest uh, oculus headsets mm -hmm. so we'll see but it's like a steep cost already <laughs> <laughs> so my, my, my two cents here is that I'm still betting more on something like Epic or some other company that takes this kind of a well, crusade to create the metaverse. <laughs> well, of course, Epic with the, the Unreal Engine 5. That yeah, makes beca because this makes all the sense. And they, they, what, they raised like two billion. Uh, yeah, yeah, because that, that cost and everything and even the whole article and whole information flow, they're saying they're pretty much symbolizing the ioi industries from ready player one the bad guys that try to take over the metaverse yeah <laughs> man like I, when i saw the headline I, I really thought it was a joke and then i read in the article it's like oh no a spokesperson confirmed it's 47 <laughs> and a half plus like and then after like you need to pay your taxes yeah and then I'm just like, so people need to buy the headset and then the creators also need a headset and then like they're going to be taken to the cleaners. Like, why would you want to 
encourage like a metaverse where you give the creators the least amount. Like you want to encourage a newly fledging metaverse to be as big as possible. You don't do that by taxing the living shit out of the creators. Like it, <laughs> bro, Zuck, you're gonna fuck the company, bro. Like no, yeah. you know the 10, 10 billion investment that it's been burned out on VR have to return somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll it's see. Still, uh, it's still less than Roblox. It's we, still less we, than Roblox. Yeah. We, we checked it. Uh, it's 27th of April that Facebook announces their quarterly result for first quarter this year. We'll be definitely watching what happens there. <laughs> we will be watching. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. There they will. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's continue. Yeah. Man. Right. This yeah, <coughs> this is a good ahead. one. This is yeah. a good one. So, uh, your favorite piranha state, or second favorite probably right now, actually, but, you know, the traditional favorite piranha state, North Korea, uh, basically has this state-sponsored hacking group called Lazarus Group, which now the U.S. says has been linked to the $600 million Axie Infinity crypto heist. <laughs> Which means that North Korean hackers were behind the biggest heist, a crypto heist of a crypto game to date. <laughs> Man, like this is just a gift that keeps on coming with the news last week that they raised another 150 million to pay back the users. And then this is just, man, like I, I, you can't make this up. What? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I tell you, like in, in one year or two years, we'll find out it was an inside drop. <laughs> I tell, I tell you that. Not North Korea, but someone from inside just took six, uh, 600 million. But it's nice to know that everyone now who's playing Axie, just know, you know, you are supporting the dictator like Kim Jong-un. You, you're literally funding the nuclear weapons program of North Korea. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Because let me guess, like part of the tokens haven't been sold yet. So they're held by North Korean controlled wallets, which means that if the crypto goes up in like value... That means that there will go up in value and earn more money, which means that A16Z and Binance and all these people, if they get more money, so does the North Korean state. Mm. Man. Yeah. Ah. There was an yeah. article about uh, one guy um, being in prison because uh, he was uh, presenting a um, really nice uh, deck in North Korea about how to avoid sanctions by uh, crypto. using crypto yeah <laughs> using crypto and now he's in prison uh, in the US for uh, five uh, years yeah five years was he American sentence. or yeah. yes yeah oh, man what yes. an idiot oh. <laughs> uh, he, he, he could be glad he only got five years because the yeah, original <laughs> yeah, original sum was 20 <laughs> But yeah, it's it's hard to kind of prove when you are like uh, have photos of yourself uh, with a board that says no sanctions, smiley, that you weren't teaching them how to <laughs> pretty much bypass the sanctions. Well, yeah, but let's see. Yeah. I think most of the funds are still in the wallet. So the jury is yeah. still on this, like how they will actually kind of spend it, move it or whatever, do with it. But yeah, I guess this story will still bear some more <laughs> continuations. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, there will be so so much speculation uh, in the in the next uh, next months. And like, I don't even know what else to say to that news. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> mm. it's uh, funny. yeah. Then we have uh, a new upcoming AR game from Niantic about breeding unique creatures, which is called Peridot, whatever that means. So um, they are coming with this um, this game into the soft launch next month after the success of Pokemon then they have they have Pikmin I'm not no idea if that's successful or not but I didn't I haven't had a chance to play it and uh, then Harry Potter <laughs> which already got canned <laughs> yeah which is so already, already like died. am I the only one who thinks that basic and Antic like they tried Settlers of Catan didn't work Harry Potter didn't work like it's only um, Pokemon, right? One one note: the Harry Potter game was, if I understood correctly, just on their infrastructure yes, cooperation. It was, something. Ah. it was mainly Warner Bros. Warner Bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, Warner Bros. Partnered with Niantic about the infrastructure, and then they launched the game. Because they have the nodes and mapped Earth and everything that you use for these games to work. 
Yeah, but they were working on Carcassonne, right? Or what was what the fuck? Yeah, was like uh, <laughs> so, Soldiers of Catan or whatever was the game or something. Like. There's like multitudes mean? of these geolocation games that are dying and nobody is noticing those. Like, as I said, the only one that I notice is the Japanese one with like thousands LTV that of nobody course. talks about. <laughs> That's making because like nobody 80 knows million about a month. it. Nobody knows about it, it only you. You're big in Japan. You're big it, in Japan, bro. <laughs> Yeah. But 50 million a month, man, or some some ridiculous number. Nobody like that. cares. Nobody <laughs> cares. It's Japan. <laughs> live, uh, live here, dude. <laughs> Play Pokemon. <laughs> oh, Pokemon. All right, <laughs> Rima, talk talk to us about this new game. What do you think? What's your take on it? Um, I'm I'm kind of puzzled to be honest because uh, I haven't seen anything new in this whole concept of like you having some kind of a creature going with you or catching in the wild or whatever it, it seems to me like pokemon itself so and without the ip that we all yeah, lo- yeah, love yeah. and cherish so that's the problem that's the only thing one. that works there that's the yeah, only thing. yeah of course be, be, it, because it's it's matches pokemon that's the yeah, thing it yeah, matches yeah, yeah, the yeah. team the mechanics everything that, that's the thing and story, everybody story wants as well to have that. yeah of course but for this this thing if they cannot I, I, I think like this whole genre needs to have some kind of disruption revolution idea or something probably within the technology itself like like the technology was the thing that brought it here in the first place like we all remember it was based on that like april 1st google video that they did yeah. like whatever four years before before pokemon go went out but it was actually the technology of it that they had that previous game um ingress, in, ingress yeah yeah so they, they already built it they know how to do it and they just slapped pokemon team on it and improved it so it was a really really big bump because as you see here within the cooperation of uh warner bros and harry potter even warner bros wasn't building him themselves they just took it from Niantic as, as a cooperation because it's it takes Niantic, so much not Niantic come on Niantic dude. sorry <laughs> <laughs> anyway I hate, I hate when you I'm, do I'm hard I'm hard I'm hard to pronounce it as well Niantic <laughs> <laughs> but 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 the thing is, it's like it, it's a similar leap, like a Clash Royale game, where they did the synchronous multiplayer so well because it's a technological leap. So I think in order to progress in this genre, we again need something similar, not like more of the same, because I don't think more of the same will work here. Yeah, I agree. So, but, or or but you know in what they're doing? Will work there. The genre mastery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the genre mastery is great, but if if your genre mastery and your whole genre is pretty much one game, where's the genre mastery? Yeah. They're one hit wonder so far. They haven't proved that they can make a second game as like good as their first one because they yeah. had Pokemon. Like even if you slap Digimon on it, it's nowhere near as big IP as Pokemon. Mm. Yeah. The thing is how they yeah how they can innovate is uh, they need to find uh, different game IP and different mechanics rather than just uh, collecting creatures and breeding them. Yeah. Any yeah. ideas what IP Harry would Potter work really good? <laughs> no. <laughs> any it? any ideas what would work really well here? Blockchain. <laughs> 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 yeah, slap Web3 and then build a, geo, a geolocation game. <laughs> on That's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Nice. I don't know. Like, we need some kind of new technology. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm, I'm, I'm guessing in order to make yeah, this kind of a success, technology. <laughs> of course, it's going great. <laughs> it is. Let's let's not go there. Let's not go there because uh, you're here the crypto yeah, but skeptic. No. But overall, like my take here is that I don't think so. This will be bigger than Pokemon Go, definitely. No, no chance. I, yeah. I don't think so. It will be even one tenth of a size. Yeah. That that's that's my my current current if uh, I, feeling that I have for this. Maybe. Maybe it's not uh, like never going to leave the soft launch. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it's gonna, also possible. Like Catan, it's gonna get yeah. killed yes. very soon. <laughs> it's gonna get Catan. <laughs> oh, ooh, ooh. You, you, ooh, nice, wow. <laughs> very nice. Okay, I love it. Yeah, but like you know, uh, cheering for the thing here that like hopefully Nanti can do something with it. But uh, the thing but is, it's just like it, it's super hard. It's super hard if you try more of the same. Like, bottom line is, like, why would I play this new game when I can play with my favorite Bulbasaur and, like, you know, and grow into yeah. a Venusaur? Like, I'm not going to go into a new universe. Like, this universe was with me since childhood. Like, yeah. Oh no. And the Pokemon Go game is still going super strong. Don't yeah. get me yeah. wrong. So. It's a great game. Hmm. Great game, and they make a shit ton of money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. What's, a, what's another... Uh, yeah. Amazing game, an IP. <laughs> Neither of your childhood IP is getting <laughs> murdered. 
<laughs> okay, so there's the Sonic the Hedgehog cooperation with uh, Roblox, uh, specifically through a company called GameFam that specializes only in making Roblox games on the Roblox platform. And uh, on April 14, which means from yesterday, players will be able to use their favorite Sonic the Hedgehog to play through Sonic Speed Simulator, uh, if I read this correctly, for free, of course. And then there's some kind of merchandising with the possibility to acquire Sonic themed items for your avatar on Roblox and all the usual cooperation nonsense. Yeah, kudos to Play Ventures. They invested in GameFam. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fast. <laughs> Pretty fast, a long time ago. Uh, it's nice. And, uh, well. Yeah, I think the, the company is pretty much the product of consolidation of the whole uh, Roblox platform in a way that, you know, these days it's not anymore like kids making viral hits or whatever. It's yeah. pretty much specialized companies that are, I think they said that they have like 50 or 100 man team already. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a completely different game yeah, than before. But they are doing this for a long time already. You know, uh, I remember um, last year, I think, or, or a year before even, uh, there was some kind of uh, interview with the, the game fam um, founder CEO? and CEO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Nice. Well, it's interesting, but uh, it suits well. Again, Sonic is a good IP for the match of the Roblox player base. So, like, from that point of moon, it seems, seems is excellent. Is it? Is it? That's the question. I wanted to ask that as yeah. well. I have never played a Sonic mobile game, but this is the and thing. I just had you to research to it that the exit exists. You want to create new, new audience in your IP, and you want okay. to have kids. Where do you find them? In Roblox. Or, uh, or, in I'm not talking about, or in know, Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> or in Fortnite. Or in Fortnite. I'm not talking about, you know, people like us who grew up with the IPs that some of us did, some of us never heard of it. <coughs> but actually, create because these games, like the Japanese ones, they never change. They are still the same. And Sonic is pretty massive these days when they have yeah. the second movie this year. So why not wh widen the audience, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what do we have there yet, uh, left? Ah, oh, banging on CD Projekt Red. I'll you t let you take that one as well, Remo. This is your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So CD Projekt Red, everyone's favorite uh, developer of Cyberpunk. <laughs> everyone's <laughs> favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after that game. <laughs> anyway, they released their annual sales numbers, which uh, seems they generated 207 million in revenue. Uh, that's, of course, a decrease 63% year over year for the previous year. Uh, but that's to be expected because this company is mostly premium uh, based, which means that the year that they release their they game they make big and then they make less which is normal cycle within the premium companies uh by comparison uh the premium financials for the year where they actually released cyberpunk it was 562 million uh regarding the performance of cyberpunk they said that they already sold 18 million copies uh to date which is massively big even though it seems from a distance the game was a flop at the time of release uh <laughs> i i may add that they already released a really 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 heavy patch 1.5 which pretty much overhauled the whole like everything that you they still haven't played that one right not yet <laughs> <laughs> i'm waiting for actual content to be released not just fixes because this is actual just content the, the game is full the, the game is ready no, what no, the no, fuck are you waiting for but they will be adding more content into it well, witcher, witcher 3 was best when you had the two date expansions in it <laughs> three mate this is a flop man every person i've spoken to who's actually played the game i'm not one of them they've said don't buy it it's buggy as shit Why? i not played anymore. the game in in what well, like anymore. as soon as it, it was launched and i i i never encountered a, a bug fuck you guys like what the not fuck? everyone has like a hundred thousand euro lo like computer to play everything <laughs> on <much. laughs> yeah, most most of the bugs are consoles of course that's why they were taken down of the playstation store yeah. in the first yeah. place i really enjoyed the game i'm not sure like what you were talking about but you're a casual casual pc but player you're a casual gamer. <laughs> yeah, really <laughs> yeah really because the game in that stage could be played without spending one point in the whole fucking skill tree man <laughs> Oh, whoa, 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 Mr. One Point of the Skill Tree. <laughs> it was easy, easy. I'm confused. Do I play, do I play the game or not? Sure, <laughs> not play Not yet. It. Wait, <laughs> wait for the expansion. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the game was launched. When was the game launched? Uh, two, two years ago? One year ago? I think it's 
2020 December or something like that. 20, yeah, de- December 2020. So it's April 2022. You have the game for one and a half years. You never played it. How long you are going to wait? Another half a year and then what? Then I play. Be the, yeah, of course. Perfect. Why not? Uh, it, it, it will wait for your single player content, man. <laughs> yeah, of course. But you know what you can do? Play it when it's launched and then replay when you know you have the new content because you already <laughs> about for sure i already forgot everything that happened in the game <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're casual <laughs> but Mancha, how does it compare to like a gta like five no, if crap. you're honest it's okay. crap okay <laughs> have you played gta 5 of course when i had no idea <laughs> last year maybe <laughs> last year maybe yeah, uh, last thing that I want to add, uh, of course, they uh, announced already Witcher 4, for sure. Yeah, that's, which, which we will that's see probably in 2027 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 28 so. or 30. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. What will, come out? what will come out first, Witcher or uh, the new GTA game? Hmm, <laughs> that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. But I think the new GTA game is already kind of, some, some info was already told about that. If I get it right. No, they, they admitted that they're working on yeah, same a as new Chief game. Project like, Red. That's yeah. all they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these games make like take so much time to make. Like these are open worlds, and and you don't build them as like you know you release them and then you move on. You then continue to work on that game for like an additional five to ten years anyway. And the GTA also has that online element that goes pretty well for them. So. Yeah. Because even even Cyberpunk was uh, was at one point uh, promising that they would be having multiplayer within it, and there would be like a separate game that would be multiplayer. Yeah, you don't know because okay. you don't read the news that much. Of course, <laughs> I don't read the news. Why would I do that? But but people were expecting it to turn <laughs> into something like the GTA Online experience. It didn't happen because you know they have their hands full with fixing the game than actually making additional content for it. I do you think it it will ever happen afterwards? Maybe, don't know. I I think you need to revive the game in the first place. So either like relaunch <laughs> it for like I know Witcher, Witcher got delayed again for the next gen release again, the Witcher three, the overhaul. Mm-hmm. Maybe they will release Cyberpunk with some kind of new content when new consoles hit in, so to kind of create that platform that they can like you know establish a base to build build on. But don't know. Like it's, it's hard. It, it's really hard. With, like to kind of do some predictions here. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's take a little break from our discussion. Uh, our friends uh, from Addictive have something to share with you guys. If you've built a mobile game for iOS or Android, you've experienced user churn. You can win those users back, but it's getting more and more expensive, even more so to acquire totally new users. Enter cross-promotion with Addictive. By identifying your users likely to churn early, you can showcase another game in your portfolio before they leave forever transforming a lost user into a new user, increasing your revenues. Learn more now at addictive.com. Yeah, okay, we're back. <laughs> let's, uh, let's discuss the, the conference guide. So what happened during the, the COVID in terms of conferences? Offline conferences. Offline, well, offline <laughs> conferences, obviously, offline. Do, do you call online conferences uh, conferences? It's just, you know, you, you miss all the, all the fun afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, the question is how 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 did these fare well? Like, did did, did you went on any or like what do you think of of the model itself? So the thing is, I was a, uh, I was speaking on like multiple of all these like online events uh, and well, it wasn't uh, well co- conferences, uh, mm. quote unquote. Um, it was very different experience. Mm. I always enjoyed the uh, the feedback from the audience, uh, and you know now I'm I was only talking to my. Uh, well, monitor <laughs> and monitor is like hmm. you know i was like showing the the show reel and all the the funny creatives and usually people laugh uh, during the real time uh, conferences and mm. face to face conferences and i was like hmm okay so what do you what do what do they think about these these creatives i have no idea and they, so, did you did you were speaking in real time yeah i was in real mm. time and also there was uh, some conferences that was that were um pre recorded as well yeah, I also did my mine two GDCs pre-recorded <laughs> to be <laughs> during Corona. Man, I'm so sorry about that, man. Yeah. That and, have, and yeah. it, it's kind of yeah, like the like the recording is going and people are already talking in the chat. So you you talk with them because 
it's good yeah. like you're supposed to answer that question of course and it's great to uh, at least have some kind of human contact there yeah yeah that's true but other than that it's all pre-recorded and it's like yeah like i never felt like the buzz of you know the gdc that i'm used to Dude, that you know and everything I had around a, it i had a talk at gdc about global launching mobile games mm -hmm. there were like 800, 150 people maybe and um 50 percent of those gave me like one star rating because they're all the indies at uh, triple uh, a console pc uh, developers and i said oh well this is bullshit this is not relevant to any, any of uh, what we do i was like yeah fuck. <laughs> seriously so why why would you uh, attend uh, a, a talk which says how to like how to global launch a mobile game or something like that oh well uh, the art of global launching a mobile game <laughs> Like ah, uh, so uh, I did enjoy, and I'm really proud that I achieved this in my life. But man, <laughs> off oh. the bucket list, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can, yeah, I can, exactly. I can check that off my bucket list. The the Istanbul event was way better, it was way better, and I think this was even like more valuable than the GDC talk because the people actually cared. <laughs> Mm. It was really relevant. So uh, yeah, it was event. yeah. But I think I think like I had a conversation. I'm not gonna name who it is, but this person they organize a conference, and I spoke to this person at the height of 2020, like end of 2020, and mm. I was just like, "Hey, how's this online going? I know you've done a couple of online stuff now. Like, how's it been in there? Like, yeah. oh, best thing ever. It's <laughs> great. You get to save on all the costs, and then like he's just like running down like why it's so good that you're doing these online." Asked the same person about like four months ago. I was like, oh, you're finally like, we're finally back live again. He's like, oh my God, thank God we're running on like fumes. <laughs> and like, oh my God, we couldn't make ends meet. And thank God, like one more year of this, we would have died. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right. So yeah. the online forum wasn't as good. He's like, no, 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 no way. And that's just the truth. Like conferences need to be live and that's how they make their money. We want to go because it's fun. And like, come on, like <laughs> online conferences? No. Like how else are we going to find out if people laugh at Mate's Johnny Sin's goddamn creatives? <laughs> <laughs> very true, yeah, very true. That's very true. But, you know, uh, that's why we always start this podcast that this is 4 a.m. Con conference I was almost i almost said co conversion again <laughs> 4 a.m conference uh, discussion because every time you are at the conference and you are in a bar with all like loud music obviously but all all the all the fun stuff and everything is actually happening after the conference not during the talks because uh, let's you know admit that uh, after nine years or ten years in the, in the industry you already heard everything basically I, I don't yeah. want to sound arrogant, but that's true. Then, yeah, I, I, you know, you yeah, need sorry. to meet people. You need to meet people afterwards and then uh, discuss like, okay, so what are you doing? What is working for you? What's not working? And share the knowledge, which is happening at mm. <laughs> 4 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> I, usually. I, yeah I've learned more about mobile ads and mobile ad monetization in an evening in Las Vegas than I have like maybe working for a mobile game for like half a year. Yeah. Like, that's just the truth. Like, that's where you find out all the gossip, all the juicy details, and all, like, the screw-ups and how to avoid them. It's just, yeah, it's super valuable. Yeah, I think I, I would pretty much put the talks into, like, three categories. One would yeah. be, like, the one that you can, like, you want to watch because there's some kind of useful information, but you can watch it on the recording. Why waste But you the never watch time. the recording, man. You never sometimes, do that. Sometimes. Yeah, I do. <sighs> The, you are the only you are you are the only person who does that. I think <laughs> you need to you need to if if you doing what I do you need to. Then the other one is that uh, you have these kind of show off uh, talks like uh, for instance Epic showing their new tech oh, or okay. like stuff like that. You want to see it for the show because you know you have like 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 the yeah, trick it's magnificent. Yeah, the trick they did when they were showing the real-time mapping where there was mm. an actress hidden behind the, mm, there on the stage and then they like show off her, that yeah. it's it's all real-time and stuff like that. That's really great, but it's more of a show-off. So you go for the show. And then you have these usually use cases that are talking about the successes of something that everybody wants to attend, like Pokemon Go had a talk during that yeah. year. Or yeah, Supercell yeah. had that talk about Crash Royale that you want to attend. 
So I, I would just put uh, again. This is more of a, like everybody will be talking about that talk that evening. So that's why you want to see it. But other than that, like there's no other thing, and you should just go to the parties and get all the chatter for everyone. But it depends on the, the seniority of the person. So if yes. you're yeah, really it's, a, like, it's an you evolution. Know. I would say uh, it's yeah, an yeah, evolution. Yeah. Like when yeah. you start in the industry, first you try to attend the lectures and learn as much as possible. Then after two years, you discover that there's pretty much sixty oh, percent <laughs> of same staff people is, all over again. <laughs> yeah, there's no actual knowledge to, to be shared. Like most of the times, there's no actual numbers, use cases, or like practical stuff. Half of it is uh, hidden advertisement. Uh, in the worst case, it's pay yeah paid uh, <laughs> lectures are the the, the worst. Basically. Yeah, yeah, and then then when you are pretty much getting into it and starting to see more of those familiar faces, you actually start to hang out with those familiar faces, and then you get the real information. Yeah, and this takes around three years. Well, even more, man, even more. For me, it took at least like five, mm. and uh, yeah, I was actively like presenting uh, already for some some years when uh, this uh, actually panned out. Guys, it's how the three of us met. We met at a Nordic game. Very true, yeah, 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 very true. Very true. But not with Jakub, though, right? Um, I we, think we, I met we, Felix sometime before, but didn't really... Uh, you know... No, it, that's it, bullshit, it, because like, the Nordic game I was there, I'd only been working in the industry for like a couple of months or something. Well, we met with Felix in Nordic game, but the, uh, I'm not sure like, two of you guys where you actually met. Um, we met somewhere different, like either Krakow or some other like local. Oh one yeah, here. maybe, maybe it was Digital Dragons. Yeah, or in Berlin somewhere. <laughs> but in Trezor? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 definitely not there. Oh, <laughs> well, for you, no, that's, well, for sure. That's, uh, that's not true. Yeah. Anyway, but like yeah. it's quite interesting also with the uh, conferences. Having been like in the start of my career on like the vendor side. It's like the only place you can actually meet people to actually sell something to. Yeah. Because, you know, right now, like doing Admon, I get maybe 10 to 15 e incoming emails every week. And I'm not going to answer any of them. Like, that's the truth. <laughs> like, honestly, like, like when I get an email saying like, oh, yeah, special discount, 100K for in like putting in yeah. my SDK in your game. I'm like, no, I'm not trusting that. And it's the only way, really, you can speak to someone and actually get anything done. And yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, I just uh, well received one uh, interesting uh, <laughs> <laughs> message on oh, LinkedIn. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was so funny. Hey, Matei, uh, I love what you're doing at uh, launcharish.me. Uh, I can help you <laughs> acquire some mobile paying users. Oh, thank you very much, man. Uh, well, I wasn't uh, making fun of uh, of uh, this guy, but it was really like, okay. I didn't know you're a mobile app as well, much. Eh? Yeah, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> That's but a, is, yeah, that's the problem isn't this the only thing calls. only thing left for these guys to kind of just mass bombard LinkedIn and and just you know wait but for someone to reply? You still have the the online conferences and and it's very true that uh, during the online conferences uh, like you can't approach so many people like you you do during the real uh, conferences from the vendor side. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mean, well, yeah. But, All right. Well. Uh, the 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 deconstruct of fun conference in uh, in Istanbul was amazing. It was like, after what well, first conference face to face for me after what like two years. Oh, I enjoyed that so much. So <laughs> I definitely want to get back. Definitely want to get back. Could I ask both of you actually to list uh, like the top three conferences you think in terms of content where it's good if you work in gaming to actually attend if you want to work in mobile gaming. Maybe one for game design and one for UA. Well, for UA, it's uh, well MAU, one hundred percent. It's mm. uh, mobile mobile apps unlocked in Las Vegas, and I was there what four times, three times speaker, obviously. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Uh, but it's actually really like mobile marketing, UA retention, CRM, everything. That's the yeah. That's the conference where you want to be. Mm. From game design perspective, I would say GDC is really ah, important. I want to say, like, don't say GDC, please. But don't say because GDC. there's so much, like, I quality know. info there that you can directly ask to people. Like, I was able to, you know, ask, like, questions, Supercell, Game Lead, and stuff like that. You, you don't have to do, don't get that. So that's one of the thing. And then, of course, like, anything Finland-based in Helsinki. Supercell even have their own conference that they used to have. The, uh, what was it, Mobile One or something One? 
forgot the name of it. But they they had there where they had like their talks, uh, which are super super kind of technical. Mm-hmm. So and you can you get to hang out. So any kind of what was it like pocket gamer or whatever kind of happens in Helsinki. That's yeah, good. pocket gamer was good when it was face to face online. Yeah, oh, it needs to be sorry. face to face. No, yeah, sorry. sorry guys, yeah. but the content was so shitty. No, 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 no. It needs to be face to face because you get to hang out with these guys. Not that you you know look at the lectures. They don't even have the lectures there. Supercell, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, no, on no, no, no. They just go to GDC if they need to. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, during the GDC, the you know the the Nordeus breakfast every year that they uh, <laughs> organized that was amazing. I met also Timur from Supercell there and others other guys from uh, from the industry there. So it was really like really interesting uh, thing that was going on for every year, every every year. So this, yeah, that's uh, those side events during the GDC. That's where the, the actual knowledge is. Magic, hab- yeah, magic, magic happens. happens. Yeah, magic mm. happens. I'd say from uh, an admon perspective, probably Games Forum. Like it's like a conference specifically for everything related to ad monetization. Nice. Super yeah. good, but it's very specific. Like it's, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Like yeah, Rima wouldn't have a good time going there at all. <laughs> by <laughs> the way, is there a nice expo at least? <laughs> yeah. By Felix. the way, expo or no expo. Doesn't uh, matter. Okay. Doesn't and matter. A couple of stalls, yeah. Oh, okay. For me, I usually enjoy talking and having presentations not on the marketing conferences or UA related conferences, but uh, conferences like Digital Dragons, um, G- well, GDC, not that much, but um, Pocket Gamer, maybe. So where there are like more producers, game designers, and not like UA people. I mean, UA more developers. People, more than yeah, more developers because UA people are like ah, that's, that's bullshit. I already know everything uh, he, he has to say. <laughs> but when you talk Sounds actually, to the, yeah, yeah, well, I know, I, I know <laughs> what I, I'm talking about. <laughs> but actually, if you if you talk to the producers, game designers, they yeah, they say like ah, okay, this is really interesting. Um, mm, okay, so our UA team doesn't know that, but <laughs> but if you talk to the UA team, they will say oh yeah, well, we'll know, we know everything. So. It's always better to talk to the, to the different departments. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's that's ex- uh, at least like my experience, and I really enjoyed way more the the conferences oriented for the the other departments. All right, so we all have said which conference we like the most, but if you like something, you also have to hate something. So which <laughs> conference do you hate the most? Mm. Yeah, I hate yeah, the come most. on. Now, what was the the worst? What was I the mean, worst? It's easy, guys. Come on. Like, I hate <laughs> Gamescom. Every year I go. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, that's man. True. Like, okay. oh, it's, it's exhausting. So nice. <laughs> but not Gamescom, not Gamescom, but the, the Devcom. That was uh, like Devco, the... Nothing. Devcom, that was, that was terrible. Because that... Uh, well, usually, like back in days when there was a Gamescom, it was GDC in Cologne. But then they canceled it in Europe, which was really unfortunate but what what can we do then there was like nothing happening alongside gamescom and they they brought the devcom which is total bullshit but okay gamescom what what do you mean i mean it's it's cologne which is almost like a dead city but what can you what can you do but it's a consumer conference maybe. yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. It's a very different yeah. type of you, you go there for the fun like the actual fun no no, no. Yeah. you know what what he does always like he always walks around and try to find anime characters and, and these like uh, bullshit statues with huge tits and whatever else like man that was so amazing when we were just walking around the games cause I, like, I had so much fun they have so much <laughs> good merchandising there man <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go this year, but like what I think I'm gonna do is just not like try to go to the venue. <laughs> no, the venue. What would you do the whole day, man? There's nothing to do in Cologne. Yeah, the, the venue is great. <laughs> Good point. I didn't think that through. <laughs> yeah, Blizzard. I think they have their official shop set up there always with like new stuff and merch and stuff like that. But anyway, like you meet people and you don't just talk about that much industry stuff there. Definitely, like you don't want to do that in Gamescom. Gamescom is more about like different things usually. Well, but on the other hand, everybody is in in town because well, you have GDC in in San Francisco, and then you have Gamescom in in Cologne, so everybody travels there, so you can actually meet a lot of uh, good old faces. Yes, yeah. second day, like after party at the Marriott Hotel Bar, <laughs> like that's where you meet every C level at every European <laughs> gaming company from yeah. here to North America. Yeah, that's what I was like, to say. The, no. the Marriott after <laughs> after yeah, two a.m. 
always packed. <laughs> the <laughs> network in that let you room in. is they, astonishing. They like, it's in. astonishing net worth in that room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Very true. All right, so I can't get you guys on the record saying one conference you guys don't like. Come on. Mm. No, well, I, I really didn't like the, the PGC conference, the online ones. That was really, that was really well, terrible quality. Sorry, guys, but that's true. Don't know, like on my side, like maybe even PGC something that's not not like that organized, like even maybe the London one. Like it, for me, it doesn't really cut it to be honest. There, that not that many people that go there. Oh really? Whoa! Mm -hmm. I would yeah. never say that. I would say the opposite. Like it's you one of the main events. You talk to different people, man, because yeah. you're more yeah. in the vendor side. You're not the developer side. Well, well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Ah, man. Again, looking forward to to be back. And uh, maybe we'll see each other again uh, while well, during the Gamescom. Maybe, maybe. In the venue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So I think that's, uh, that's it, right, uh, for today. Yeah, this is a light one, uh, but still. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, see you. See you next week. Time. Yeah, see yeah. you next week. Oh, yeah. yeah. See you. And uh, all right. bye bye. Was there a Sonic game in 2015 for mobile? Fuck yeah, there was. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Well, no, what? There's a lot of Sonic stuff. Yeah, you have the movies coming in, and they were kind of, you know, pretty yeah, rad. Yeah, of course, yeah. And there's the second one this year coming, so... What the fuck was it called again? Sonic... Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> was it? <laughs> Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. There you go. Ah, there yeah, go. yeah, they had the Olympic Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's start. Let's start. Yeah. Yeah.